What's up brand builders, Stephen Harahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn six neuromarketing hacks to build your brand so you can appeal to your audience's primitive nature and give them what their reptilian brain subconsciously wants. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to build brands that go beyond visuals using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be well on your way. And to fast track your learning, make sure you grab the Pro Brand Strategy Blueprint. The link is in the description. Now, we've learned a lot over the last 10 to 20 years through neuroscience in why we do what we do and how we behave the way we behave. I say we, I mean, I haven't done any real research myself. I've just read some books. But either way, it's naturally progressed on to marketing and neuromarketing. And we're using this now to better understand our audiences, better understand what they're going through and why they make the decisions that they make so we can shape our messaging to influence them and to give them exactly what they want. So what is neuromarketing? Well, neuromarketing leverages neuroscience and that's leveraging our understanding in the way the human brain works and the way we behave as people so we can better understand individual audiences to understand what they need and what they want so we can better give them what they want. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that our audience knows exactly what they want. In fact, for the most part, they make most of their decisions, you make most of your decisions, I make most of my decisions and our audiences make most of their decisions through the reptilian brain. Now the reptilian brain is over 500 million years old and it's evolved over time to keep us alive. So we trust that and the decisions that are made there are made within a nanosecond and they are made within our subconscious. We don't even realize it's being done. We don't even realize that we're making a decision. So neuromarketing is about understanding that brain, understanding what that brain is looking for and then tailoring our messaging to appeal to that brain. Now, before we go on, why don't we address the big elephant in the room, which is the fact that the idea of neuromarketing is manipulation. You know, we're trying to understand the human brain so we can manipulate what they're thinking. And look, you know, there is an argument for that, but realistically, this really depends on who is using neuromarketing. There are some companies out there who will leverage neuromarketing as far as it will go to really manipulate people and really to try and trick them into buying something that they don't need. But you can use neuromarketing at its basic form to just understand who your audience is to better give them what they need. Now, let me give you an example of this. Let's say you're about to go on a date with somebody with a friend of a friend and you want to make the best possible impression. So you'll use what you know about that sex and about what that particular person likes. So you might wear a nice shirt, you might wear nice cologne and a pair of nice shoes, you might have some interesting topics to talk about. You might even go so far as to asking your mutual friend what this person likes, what's their favorite color, what are their favorite flowers, and go in as best prepared as you can. Now that is perfectly okay, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you take it a little bit further and you were to go to that person's house and go through their bin and look for information that you can use or you stalk their Facebook page, well, no, that's not okay. So there is a balancing act here in terms of what's okay and what's not. And the best way that you can get that right is by using a filter of ethics, using a filter of honesty. Is what I'm doing honest? Is there an ethical issue with what I'm doing here? And if the answer is no, then you can use neuromarketing at its most basic form to just understand who your audience is and understand what it is that they're really looking for. So now that you know that neuromarketing is a powerful tool to be used only for good, now let's dive in and have a look at six hacks that you can use to build your brand. Hack number one, leverage sensual branding. So here you're leveraging all of the different senses. You're leveraging sight, sound, smell, taste. So what does your brand look like? What kind of colors are you using? What kind of style do you have? Typography, image style are you using? What about the sounds that you're using as well? The sounds before your YouTube videos or the sounds within your social posts? And what about the smells? Do you have a physical premises and can you infuse that premises with a unique smell that they're going to remember? So 
you're leveraging all of the senses here within your brand experience to give them something unique that they can take away. Hack number two, understand price and value perceptions. Now this has been used for years when you go into a shop and you see something for $9.99 or $9.95, really it's 10 bucks. But when we see 10 bucks, the perception is, is that it's at, at a higher price, even though the difference is negligible. And when you understand that, we, when you understand pricing perception and you also understand value perception, so value is where you add bonuses or extras on top of what you're giving them for a certain price so that they feel they're getting the better deal in terms of value price trade-off. If you're able to load the value and if you're able to use price perception, then you can really understand what the primitive brain is looking for and give them what they're looking for. Hack number three, offer a micro commitment. Now, chances are when somebody comes across your brand for the first time, they're not gonna be ready to do business with you purely because Today, on average, we need at least seven to eight touch points, possibly more, to really kind of register your brand for the first time. So you need to give opportunities for micro commitments. Now, what micro commitments will do is it will help to change the relationship between you and your audience. And you can kill two birds with one stone here. First of all, you change the relationship in the fact that there is some kind of commitment there, even though it is really small and you give them value in exchange for that commitment, and you also get the opportunity to follow up with them later on. So you really wanna make sure that you're putting out offers of micro commitments so you can start to change the relationship and really have the ability to follow up on multiple touch points. Hack number four, leverage scarcity. Now, look, this has been done quite a bit to the point that it is kind of getting old hat, and if you have fake scarcity in there as in, you know, this offer is gonna end in 20 seconds or, you know, this offer is, uh, there's only two available and that is fake and you can, you can feel that that's fake. Well, then it can have the opposite effect. But if you do understand the neuroscience behind scarcity and the fact that we are fearful of missing out on an opportunity, then you can leverage that. The key here is to make sure that that opportunity does feel like a real opportunity, that it is in fact, a real opportunity. So you need to create an environment where you have those opportunities every now and again. If it's there full time as a scarcity tactic and there's no real scarcity there, then it's not gonna have the real effect. But if you use scarcity from time to time as seasoning just here and there, then it can have a really, really impactful effect. Hack number five, give them simple. Now, this seems like a very, very simple hack and it is very simple, but it is hugely, hugely effective because neuroscience has told us that the primitive brain makes these decisions based on a small amount of simple information. Now, if you overload your audience with complex information, if you try to flex your muscles and show them that you know all of these technical terms, then chances are you're going to scare them away and you're going to confuse them because that's not going to be what makes the decision. The reptilian brain is what makes the decision and you need to be as simple as possible. And there's this term called decision paralysis as well, where if you don't make it easy for them to choose an option, if you don't make it easy for them to buy, if you give them too many options, they'll get overwhelmed and they'll abandon whatever offer you've put in front of them. So make sure you simplify everything within your brand from your website copy to your UX, to everything within your brand experience. Make sure everything is simplified and take away that complexity. Take away any opportunity that they will have to run away because you're too complex. Simplify everything and make it easy for them. Hack number six, leverage the power of empathy. Now, empathy is hugely, hugely powerful because if you think about your own life, for example, if you think about the people that you tend to gravitate towards, well, you tend to push away from those who are takers, those who spend time talking about themselves, who don't take the time to understand who you are or to ask questions about who you are. To in, They instead spend all their time talking about themselves, worrying about themselves and trying to get whatever they can. So if you think on the other hand about people who give, people who take the time to understand who you are, to ask you questions, to really take the time to listen to the answers that you give them, then you'll feel connected to that person just because they've taken that interest, they've taken the time to understand you and that empathy is really, really impactful. So bring that into your business, understand 
who it is your audience is and what they're going through, what emotions they have attached to whatever they're going through and use that empathy. Show them that you understand, show them that you care and that will be really impactful. They will store you in an important part of their brain that you have made a connection with them. You've shown some interest and you've given them that understanding. And as I said, that is hugely impactful. Now look, neuroscience and neuromarketing, it's relatively new. It's really only in the last 20 years that we've made these real advancements. And who knows where that's gonna be in the next 20 years. And it's kind of scary when you think about it, but without going into too much detail and without projecting too far into the future, take this, if you only take one thing from this video, take this, that as people, we are simple and we have primitive needs. Now, our brains make decisions in our subconscious and they make those decisions based on the simplest of information. So if you understand that, if you understand that that's how your audiences behave, if that's how they make decisions, then you can appeal to that simplicity. You can appeal to that reptilian brain and you can give them what they want through your messaging and through your brand experience. But I would love to hear anything from you about neuroscience or neuromarketing or whether or not you've used neuroscience and neuromarketing within your field, if you've got any experience with it, if you've got any stories around how you've used it and how it has been for you. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you have any challenges around understanding neuroscience and understanding neuromarketing and how it applies to your own business, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of those. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. It'll let you know when I've got new videos coming out. And if you want more on neuroscience and neuromarketing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure, sure you hit that thumbs up because it'll tell me that that's the kind of content that you like and I can make more of that. If you want more actionable brand strategy tips and techniques, head on over to brandmasteracademy.com. Get yourself signed up for the list it's free and I keep some exclusive content for that list as well. So get yourself involved. And as I said at the beginning of the video, there's plenty of downloads on there, including the pro brand strategy blueprint. If you want to get your hands on that, it is free. But as I said, I would love to hear from you in the comments below about your experiences and about your challenges. I'll do my best to answer all of those. Until next time, brand like a master. and I'll see you in the next video.